Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Chris, and of course, this is my channel, Barnard 11970. Thank you, as always, for checking out my channel. All right, guys, I actually did not want to initially watch this when I heard that the president is giving a State of the Union address, but I figured might as well listen to what he has to say and put my thoughts on it. So here it is after just finish watching what the State of the Union address was. All right, a couple of things I noticed. Uh, the first thing is on the YouTube video feed where they had the live feed, I noticed that um, the chat was disabled. I found that kind of interesting. I guess they don't want to have people being able to share their true freedom of speech. Uh, but I can understand they'll probably get a lot of trolls in there, so I can't get too mad or you know surprised about that. Another thing I noticed, just like any uh, State of the Union address, you'll always see the Whatever president is in there, you'll always see that particular, uh, whether a Democrat or a Republican, you'll see their party always standing up and applauding for everything. The only time I really saw where both parties stood up is when they were talking about uh, the troops and the veterans. So, you know, it's kind of like one of those, oh, we got to go up and stand up and applaud thing. Just shows no unity. All right. So the first things he was talking about in the beginning. He was talking about the economy growing, most jobs since 1999. Uh, unfortunately, he failed to mention the fact that most of these jobs are part-time. More and more people are working at jobs like McDonald's and Walmart and lower-paying jobs. So yes, they are categorized as jobs, but if you're working part-time or you're working at Best Buy or working at a bar uh doing minimum amount of uh, wages, you're not really going to be able to support a family of four owning a house. So it's nice that the uh, economy is supposed to be growing with the most jobs, but he didn't specifically mention what type of jobs as far as part-time holiday jobs and lower income jobs. All right. He also talked about unemployment, the lowest in decade. Uh, again, when you're talking about unemployment, one of the things he didn't mention is that once a person goes a certain time period without getting a job, I think it's six months, correct me if I'm wrong, it could be a little bit longer, um, they are no longer marked as unemployed because they can't find a job, so they basically take them off the list. So some people have been trying to search for jobs for so long that they are taken off the list of not being employed. Don't ask me, ask your government and ask the people who make these tabulations. But unfortunately, it is true that if a person hasn't had a job, found a job in a certain amount of time, they are actually no longer placed in the labeling of unemployment. Plus the fact, keep in mind, like with the first part I talked about, if you have a part-time job, then you are no longer unemployed. If you're now working at Wendy's and you're working, making minimum wage, you're still no longer unemployed. So, you know, just saying that is a little misleading. Um, when he was talking about the military stuff, he was talking about protecting our planet. And that's in quotes because that's exactly what he said. Um, to me, I find that a little interesting because it's not our job to protect the planet. Now, he wasn't talking about the nature and, you know, weather and control the environment. He was talking about militarily. So it, uh, that to me suggests more of a police state um, where it's it's our job to worry about ourselves. If somebody attacked us, then yes, we have the right to protect ourselves, but it shouldn't be our right to be interfering in everybody else's state of affairs. That's not how it's supposed to be, especially when you know we are supposedly brought up with no foreign entanglements. Doesn't seem to be that case. All right. Um, another thing he pointed out is the stock market has doubled. Now, that may be true, but he did not talk about the fact that due to programs like quantitative easing, money that was borrowed from the Federal Reserve was paid for through our taxes and as is being paid for by our taxes has gone into Wall Street to pump up that market. So it's not like the economy has been thriving, showing the rise in stocks naturally. They're taking borrowed money, which we have to pay back and dumping it into Wall Street 
which is giving a false sense of security by making the stock market like the Dow Jones look very promising. Again, misleading. All right. Um, he was also talking about things like seven days of paid sick leave and raising the minimum wage. Now, thinking about those things, that can be a beneficial thing. And I'm sure I can understand why most people might view that, especially when you are on the employment side. But me being a business owner, a small business owner, the average person that owns a small business could not afford to be giving away paid sick leave because of the fact, like, for example, I own my own massage business. And if I knew I had to pay somebody seven days and they were not there, to me, that could ruin my business because what would I base it on? How is it guaranteed seven days? You know, these are things they have to think about from the employer's point of view that lower businesses may not be able to afford to be giving somebody that. What if if it's mandatory that they get the seven days? What if a person wasn't sick and they just use those days just so they can get a basically a paid vacation? I think that's a something that they have to watch out for. And again, if you think about the raising of the minimum wage, now I can understand that most people think, oh, you know, I can't live making the money that I'm making. Well, here's the thing. If you're working at a minimum wage job, you shouldn't be surprised about that. You will never see a doctor or a lawyer or a scientist making minimum wage. Like they say in life, you get what you pay for. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad job, but if your job is sweeping up garbage, you're not going to be making $100 an hour. If you if your job is handing french fries over a counter, you're not making $75 an hour. So the idea is not thinking about minimum wage. It's how do we get people to get better jobs? Because minimum wage is supposed to be a starting place, not a I'm going to stay there for the rest of my life. And what they don't understand is the consequences behind that. So let's say they raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Now, just imagine places like McDonald's and people that are getting payments for people that have, basically, there's no real requirement skills. Like, you know, it takes a lot more degrees to become a doctor than it does to be able to type in a cash register. I'm not saying it's it's for people of lower intelligence or anything. I'm just saying you need a lot more schooling and a lot more education and a lot more knowledge to be a doctor than somebody that's working a cash register. So it's a lot easier to find somebody to operate a cash register than to become a doctor. So that's why you're going to see the salary. So if you are taking a minimum wage and raising it to the point where it's so much more than what it was for basically jobs where you can get almost anybody to do them, just imagine how much they're going to have to raise the cost for the consumer. Do you think you're going to see those dollar specials anymore? I mean, that might be a good thing when it comes to it, but just think of places like Walmart. How many millions of people shop there? If they have to pay their employees that much more money, do you really think the owners of these corporations are going to say, oh, well, I'll just pocket that and just cut it as a loss? No, they're going to pass on the extra fees to the consumer. So even though you may raise your salary, they're going to raise the prices of everything. So it's going to balance out and it probably be a disadvantage because they'll probably raise it more than the average minimum wage person will earn. So more people will suffer. <coughs> Excuse me. So it may sound good, but when they don't talk about the details, it loses its, its flavor. All right. So we talked about things like lower cost community college to zero dollars for the first two years. Now, again, that may sound nice, but remember, lower cost where are they getting the money to pay for that? Because colleges just don't work for free. And it's only two years. Most people's majors require four years, if not more. So it will help people. But remember, when they want to lower the cost of something or do something when it comes to money, it has to come from somewhere. So where will they be taking that from? Will we be borrowing more money, putting us into deeper debts, which we all have to pay back for? Will they be taking away other programs, which may be vital for other people in this, in this you know, country? Who knows? So again, they only talk about the parts that people want to hear. Okay. Another thing, like, for example, infrastructure. 
bridges, ports, etc. he talked about, which again, sounds great, but where are, where is the money coming from? Are they going to borrow another trillion dollars to fix everything? So I know these things have to get done, but and I know this might people might be watching this, especially if it's your first time, say, well, this person's very negative. It's not negative, it's being realistic. Because to be able to build these things, you need workers. Workers want to get paid. So we have to understand where is the money going to come from? And you're not talking a couple of thousand dollars. You're not even talking a couple of million dollars. You're probably talking in the hundreds of billions of dollars to fix the infrastructure. Should it be done? Absolutely. But considering we're a nation that's $18 trillion plus in debt, I don't know how many more billions that's going to add to the debt, which we ultimately have to pay for. So again, sounds good, but they don't get into the full details. All right. He also talked about families getting healthier. He talked about health care. Um, well, first of all, when you have things like genetically modified foods and things like fluoride, which are basically making people sicker, it's kind of hard to get families healthier when we're eating more and more garbage. And I mean, you can always tell when people like my wife and others who are eating more vegetarian and more organic, and I've been getting into that eating a lot more organic foods. Sadly, how many decades ago, it was just called food. And now specifically, you have to spend more money to eat healthier and what used to be something you just grew from the ground. So again, sounds nice, but there's a little bit more to it. All right. He was talking about with the military, he's talking about supporting Ukraine. One thing they didn't speak about is the fact that the Ukrainian people voted to want to go back to the Soviet Union and they did it by a vote. And because for some reason we didn't like it, we said it didn't count or it didn't matter. So. The Ukrainian people spoke up through their votes and said, we want to rejoin Russia because they were part of Russia longer than this country has ever been since it was founded. So there again, the average person may be misled by that. Here's another thing they talked about. They're trying to stop a nuclear Iran. Now, that sounds nice and that's great fear porn. But they've been saying stuff like this for decades. This is not a new event. How many decades can they talk about Iran becoming this nuclear superpower and people still believe it through their fear porn? Again, if you go back and check, you know, old president's State of the Union addresses for decades, you'll see they, they would always talk about Iran. I mean, you can go back all the way to the 80s. And they've been talking about a nuclear Japan, uh, Iran. So either Iran is totally incapable of getting nuclear weapons over multiple decades, or it's not what they lead you to believe it is. Uh, they talked about the cyber threats, and I always find it funny when they use that kind of the fear mentality of protecting people, they always have to mention kids. To me, that's just one of those little shots and everything. I mean, yeah, we need a, a cyber thing, but that all depends on what they're going to do. Again, they could use it on a platform and say, well, we need to protect you from cyber threats. But what about all the other things on the internet, this freedom of speech, people like myself and others that talk about alternative viewpoints on YouTube, will that be restricted? Who knows? I mean, sometimes they add different things to a plan. So you have to see the whole package. And last but not least, they were talking about climate change. And of course, they use the scare tactic of how, you know, it's going to destroy the planet. Well, don't you remember just what, two years ago, a little less than that, maybe. They were harping on it, calling it global warming. And all of a sudden, there was a reversal, and they called it a polar vortex. Now they're using the climate change. So they're just changing the vocabulary, and they're changing the words. But people don't seem to understand it's all fear tactics, and it's not what they lead you to believe. And if you think about it, if they want to talk about all these carbons and emissions and things supposedly destroying the ozone layer, layer and all of the things that are going around destroying the planet, well, what about the oil spill in Mexico? What about all the fracking that's polluting the public water? What about all the, the, the corporations in this planet they allow to send the smokestacks of, of God knows what into the atmosphere? So it's a little hypocritical if you think about it. It's not the average person's carbon footprint that's causing the majority of the problems. It's major corporations that are trying to cut costs any way they can, and they cause more problems in the environment than we could ever do on our worst days. So we need to be a little realistic with these things. So overall, I mean, 
I'll, I'll give Obama credit. He can speak. He's very good at that. But if people don't see between the lines and they don't see the bigger picture of things that are said, it's the meaning is, is just not going to be taken the way it should be. And that's what it's all about is directing the people in a certain direction. So they don't want you to hear about, you know, what's going on with the unemployment and how they regulate the numbers. They just want you to hear, oh, well, unemployment's better. I guess that's going good. They don't want to talk about the fact that they pump money through quantitative easing, which is what we basically borrow from a private owned bank called the Federal Reserve, which we have to pay for. And it pump it into Wall Street. They just want to say, well, the stock market has doubled. Well, that sounds nice, but if people don't really take their responsibility to check into these things, they're easily misled. And that's one of the things about my channel that I've always spoken about is to do your own due diligence. Check your own things. Do your own research. If not for anything, just to verify somebody is correct or didn't just make a mistake. It doesn't always have to be flat out lying. Sometimes errors can be made or sometimes it's just to verify things to make sure they're accurate. So I would love to hear what you guys think about this. If any of you watch the State of the Union, give us your opinion. Leave your comments. Give this a thumbs up and share it. I want this channel to be something where people can be able to know that it's okay to share your opinions. doesn't always necessarily mean everybody's going to agree with you. But the one thing I've learned on my time in this channel is if you spend your whole time trying to please everybody, you're going to be disappointing yourself because it's just never going to happen. So you do the best that you can, but you don't want to rely on one person, one government, one president, one leader to do what's important for you. And research is a big one. Otherwise, you're just going to be a follower the rest of your life. And that's what they're counting on because they want to give you the rah-rah speeches, the what ifs, and, you know, talk about Americans that are struggling and point out one or two people because it's a nice story to read. But proof is in the pudding. Things are not getting better. And they can do the what ifs for decades. They've been talking about things like solar energies and wind power turbines and alternative energies since the 50s. I mean, how long can they talk about it before they actually do it? So I'm going to leave the video at this point. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch. I hope you will give it a thumbs up if you appreciate it. And let's hear your comments, see what you think. And thank you for watching my channel. This is Barnon11970 signing out and telling you all have a great night and think for yourselves. Peace.